हेलो हाय गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल विद एक्सप्लोसिव एंड टुडेस वीडियो विल बी ऑन क्रिप्टो करेंसी सो इन द लास्ट थ्री वीडियोस व्हाट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इज दैट द हिस्ट्री ऑफ मनी वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट हिस्ट्री ऑफ मनी इन डिटेल्स एंड वी हैव केम टू अ कंक्लूजन दैट फियट करेंसी हैव सम इश्यूज एंड कैन वी थिंक ऑफ एन अल्टरनेटिव ऑफ फियट करेंसी ओके currency okay so just to give you a brief from the last video what we have discussed is that we were there in the topic like why money has value we have considered there at a point and we have tried to understand why money has value just to refresh our memory let's consider why fiat currency has value basically something to have a value means it should be acceptable acceptability we have studied over what is the topic of history of money properties of money that we have discussed about acceptability uh, portability durability fungibility and durability these were the properties of money that we study and the first thing about that was was the acceptability so the thing is that money or the currency are acceptable because they are created by the government so the thing is that uh, government has mandated that uh, in a particular country that th this currency will be used for buying and selling of things and we can't use any other thing for the same basically the government is something that maintain the supply of these currencies and they artificially creates the demand of this money or fiat currency by mandating that only this fiat currency can be used in this country government maintains the supply and demand of a currency due to which it is basically acceptable in a particular country due to the laws of the government uh, money is acceptable The next thing that we have already discussed about the properties of money was the portability. Yes, with the fiat currency which we are currently having is pretty much portable because basically we can keep a lot of money in our pocket and we can be able to go buy something like a gold jewelry or something. We will be able to buy by keeping some amount of money in our pocket by using those money. So money is pretty much portable as we can keep it in our pocket. Another thing that we have discussed about the divisibility. Yes, money is very divisible as well because we can buy small things by using small amount of money. Money. Basically, the smallest unit of money is one rupee coin or two rupee coin which we are having, and the largest unit is two thousand rupees. So basically, money is pretty much divisible as well because we can buy small things as well, like one rupee toffee we can buy using one rupee coin. So money is divisible as well. And the thing, other thing which we have discussed about the uh, fungibility. So fungibility basically means that if we have one unit of uh, some substance, we should be able to exchange with the one unit of the same substance. Basically, that means is that let's say we have two ten rupees coins, ten um, rupees notes or ten rupees coins we are having. These both the coins be the same number or something is different, but value of both the ten rupee coins is just ten rupees only. Okay. So all the ten rupees coins which is there in circulation or ten rupee notes which is there in circulation. Are having 10 rupee value only. Okay, that where it is basically the fourth fungibility means. So any note of 10 rupee, let's say two persons are having and they exchange the 10 rupee note, the value value which both will be having is 10 rupees only. So money is pretty much fungible as well. The fiat currency or money which we are currently having is pretty much fungible as well. So what all points we have discussed? Acceptability we have discussed. Durability we have discussed. Portability we have discussed. And fungibility we have discussed. Now last point which we left for the properties of money was the durability. Is money durable? The So the physical form of money which we are having, like paper notes, those are pretty much durable because thing is that we can keep them in wallet for too long and they remain like uh, intact. There is no issues with them. Physical money which we are having is pretty much portable, but the what about the digital money which we are having, basically in our phones and all that money is also durable as long as the government is keeping track of those records and uh, keeping the track of our balances and all. That money is pretty much uh, durable. So the thing is that uh, we can say the conclude is that that. Yes, physical money is pretty much durable, and uh, but as a store of value, store of value basically means that uh, the transaction which we are doing online or the trans balances which we are having online is all dependent on the. Uh, records which bank is maintaining. If they do keep stock uh, uh, maintaining those records, then those money which uh, which we are having in our bank account will have no value. So as a store of value, this is something which is lagging in our current fiat currency. When we think of an alternative of these fiat currency, this is a basic basic question which uh, which has arise uh, in lot of people minds and which has give birth to the cryptocurrency which we are using uh, currently. When we think of an alternative, is uh, is very big question because it is a little tricky to have. Something which is not involving the government. Thinking of an alter alternative basically means that uh, we are thinking of something that we can be able to use uh, to uh, to buy or sell something within a country uh, without the involvement of government, and that is not possible or non-tribal currently. 
thinking of any alternative is pretty much difficult because the government is something that bring in trust in the monetary system of money which we are currently having and to remove government debt basically means we are removing the trust if we talk about the gold coin that we were using previously the metal and the so gold coin is basically basically a metal and then metal bring in the trust between the people that yes uh, and this gold coin is having some value but even with the case of gold coin so this gold coin which we are having uh, now let's say two persons are printing gold coin at their home and now we can't know the quality of the gold that you are they are using or how much quantity of the gold that they have in this in this gold coin that is all dependent on those two people because they can mark uh, it as a five Gram, but it is having only three grams of gold, or it is it maybe it is twenty two carat gold, and they are marking it as a twenty four carat gold. In the case of gold coins as well, we need a central authority like a government because they will be someone to print or stamp gold coin. That yes, this is the quality of the gold coin. This is the quantity of the gold which is used in this gold coin. Basically, in the case of gold coin as well, we need a government. And the thing is that in any monetary system, we will be needing government because the government is someone which creates the supply of these coins. And basically, they also create the artificial demand by mandating a particular currency in a country. So, government is someone that manages. The supply and demand of a currency. Now, if we are thinking of an alternative, then we should be able to bypass this government, and we we should be able to bring in trust in our uh, alternative. And that is very hard to think about, or it is near to impossible. Until and unless uh, Satoshi Nakamoto came into picture, basically, who Satoshi Nakamoto is, that is not clear to anyone. Up till date today, uh, there yeah, I think so 10 to uh, 10-15 years have passed uh, till we are all uh, came to know about Bitcoin and blockchain. And until today, nobody know who Satoshi is. Maybe he can be a single person, or Satoshi Nakamoto can be a whole organization who has developed this uh, cryptocurrency or coin. So Satoshi Nakamoto came with an example which is known as Bitcoin, which is basically a global currency. So what we can think of a global currency is something like that. Anybody in the world can transfer money to anybody else without using. any central authority so the main property of bitcoin is basically that there is no central authority involved so so there is no bank involved to maintaining the transaction which are taking place if there are no banks involved this is huge having a monetary system that is not having a central authority is itself a big threat to the banks which are currently there that's why uh, in a lot of countries this uh, cryptocurrency itself is uh, banned because they are a threat to their government as they as they no bank involved or no government involved in the whole maintenance of those uh, currency So apart from that, uh, there is ban and all that is uh, something to do with the banks. But uh, apart from that, there is solid research done on the cryptocurrencies and blockchain, and it is a pretty solid topic. We and we can uh, completely rely on that. And if you are not trusting me, you will be trusting it in a few more lectures where we are studying about the Bitcoin and its underlying uh, properties, and you will be able to understand why. Bitcoin or some cryptocurrencies are so much reliable. Uh, uh, now to understand about blockchain, what blockchain is? Blockchain is you can consider as something like a uh, record of transaction. So blockchain basically means a records of transaction. What are the building blocks of a blockchain or currency, which is the application of blockchain? What we can say? The basic uh, pillars of cryptocurrency are cryptography and decentralization. Cryptography is something which brings in the trust in the cryptocurrency. So basically, the math which is involved in the cryptography is what brings in the trust in the cryptocurrency another thing is decentralization so the technology which is used uh, to bring in decentralization is peer to peer networking and that was developed in around 1990 and 2000 so that is something that brings in the decentralization in the cryptocurrency so cryptocurrency the two important properties of cryptocurrency is decentralization and another thing is the cryptography that is used a lot of people have tried to think of an alternative of fiat currency but they were failing to, uh, to satisfy one property of Of the uh, existing currency, fiat currency, which which you are having, and that property was the there should be no double spending. Now, what double spending means is that we should not be able to spend the same money twice. So, so in the case of uh, let's say fiat currency, if we have a physical note, if we give it to someone else, now that uh, physical note is no no longer present to us, we won't be able to double spend it. And the same goes with the gold coin as well. Once we have a gold coin, once we have given it to someone else, we don't have the access to that gold coin, so we won't be able to double spend it. Uh, but in the case of digital transaction which are taking place, let's say I do, I have transfer five hundred uh, rupees to someone. Uh, now 
now the uh, bank has to come in to uh, ensure that, that there is no double spending involved. We should not be able to send those 500 uh, rupees to someone else again. Uh, that uh, that is ensured by the government. Government basically a central authority, something like a bank has to come in to ensure that there is no double spending involved in the in the case of digital transaction. And the whole point of this cryptocurrency is that to remove that. Uh, Central authority, which is the bank, because why should we share all the details to the bank? How much amount we are having like balance? How much amount we are transferring? Uh, all these information are going to the bank. Why should bank have all these information? Why can't we have our transactions uh, decentralized? And the whole thing you know, that uh, gave birth to the cryptocurrency, you know? and the blockchain was able to solve this double spending problem as well. And we will see how it is able to solve this double spending problem. But to begin with, let's understand what blockchain is. Blockchain is basically a, a data structure which is basically a chain of blocks the first block of the blockchain is called as the genesis block and then we have blocks added to the blockchain all of these blocks are having the transactions which are taking place in the blockchain network so we have something like a broadcast network basically the blockchain network we are having in, and those network will be consist of the nodes basically nodes of the various users which are there in the whole world they, they are having the computer and their computer act as a node so we are having this whole network let's say there are two people in the world which are trying to have a transition let's say a and b they don't know each other and they want to have a transaction you know, they want to have a transaction basically they wanted to exchange something or they have wanted to trade something so that's why let's say a wanted to transfer five bitcoin to b okay this transaction they want to make now this transaction between a and b is added to the blockchain now once the transaction is added to the blockchain and as we have studied previously as well once the transaction is added to the blockchain it becomes tamper proof nobody can and uh, reward those transactions. Okay, so now both A and B can show yes, transaction is completed, and now we will have five bitcoins definitely that is given to him by the A. So this is the whole essence of the blockchain that that it is tamper proof and uh, basically blockchain as I have told you before is the records of transaction it contains the records of all the transactions which are taking place in the broadcast network. Now to break, break down this transaction which is taking place between A and B let's break down it uh, to understand a little more about how cryptocurrencies work. So let's say A, a transfer 5 bitcoin to B so what A will do is that A will be creating a transaction and he will be signing it with his private key private key and public key or something which is related to cryptography and we will study it in detail later but let's say A creates a transaction and he signs it basically when we are creating a check we sign it to ensure that yes we have authenticated that we wanted to transfer let's say some amount to someone else okay in the same way we A will create a digital transaction and he will sign it with his private key. So when the transaction is signed, it will be sent to the broadcast network. And one important thing about broadcast network is that it is based on peer-to-peer -peer networking. So there is no central authority. And what that basically means is that if there is no central authority involved, then all the nodes are at equal level. No one will be having more privileges, no one will be having less privileges. All of the nodes will be having the same privileges. So and the important privilege that all the nodes are having is that everyone in the network will be notified if any transaction takes place in the network let's say if a is transferring five bitcoin to b and everyone in the network will be able to know that yes a has done a transaction with b with the five bitcoins okay and how that will work is that let's say a does a transaction b and he, he shares a transaction to b and his peer nodes let's say a is having a peer node of say its peer peers are e and f so they will also be notified about this transition now b is having the peer nodes like c and d so they also will, will be notified about this so the whole bitcoin network or whole blockchain network will be notified Notified about this transaction, then what will happen is that then a consensus protocol will be run. What is consensus protocol is that we will study in detail in our next video. But to let you know what consensus basically means is that a consensus protocol is something that that we will be using to make everyone agree that what should be our next block. Okay, everyone will be agreeing on this uh, block which will be added to the blockchain and this block was the outcome of this consensus protocol okay the block will be something like it will be having some transaction and let's say a's transaction is added to this block okay of giving five bitcoins to be and this block is added to the blockchain now once the block is added to the blockchain now everyone is aware that yes a's transaction is to be is now permanent until and unless our transaction is added to the blockchain it is uh, still not confirmed but once it is added to the blockchain it becomes 
confirm from transaction okay now once everyone you know yes a has done the transaction to b now let's say a wanted to spend those five bitcoin again now he won't be able to do that because everyone is already aware that he has, a has already spent his five bitcoin previously because they have all the order notification okay and they are also aware that this transaction is added to the blockchain so they can cross verify from the blockchain yes this transaction is there so a won't be able to do the double spend of the five bitcoin that he was having previously okay so in this way blockchain has helped us into solve the problem of double spend so this was the advantage of the blockchain basically a blockchain is basically a cost of transaction as i have told you previously and that all the transaction which are taking place from the genesis block till that uh, latest block which is mined and uh, mine basically means it which is uh, added to the blockchain and uh, all the transaction which are recorded basically give the balances of all the nodes which are there because let's say a transfer five bitcoin to b a transfer five bitcoin to someone else all the transaction which are done by a will be there in the blockchain no? and we consolidate all those transaction we will be able to get the balance of a current balance of a no? in this way blockchain system work and in this way everyone will be able to know how much their balances will be based on the transaction which are recorded in the blockchain in this way by using the blockchain as a database of records we were able to solve the problem of double spending which is a huge thing which we were not able to solve with the previous consensus protocol so satoshi nakamoto was someone who had developed this blockchain system and the consensus protocol which is used basically the research paper which he has published he has mentioned about this consensus protocol and the name of the consensus protocol which he has used for bitcoin is the proof of work what bitcoin is and how it works we will study in our next video for up until then thank you